What is the best mobile antenna for your vehicle for a VHF, UHF radio? Sometimes tri-band, sometimes more bands than just the standard 2 meter, 70 centimeter. What's the best antenna? I'm going to give you my picks today coming up right now. Thank you for joining the channel today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB, and this is Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. One of the most commonly asked questions I get on the channel for what ham radio to choose and what intended to choose is about your vehicle. I get a lot of questions about what to choose for your vehicle. So those of you getting a technician license, or if you just got a technician license, you have full open access to all of the VHF and UHF bands for amateur radio, basically everything 50 megahertz and up. Most of your mobile radios are going to be uh, VHF two meters and UHF 70 centimeters. So I'm going to give you a list of antennas today, eight to 10 different variations of antennas today that are best for your vehicle and several different mounting methods to mount them as well so let's get right into this today now throughout this presentation i will share links to various websites amazon gigaparts a couple other websites on here so check the links in the description below for everything and make sure you check prices to to make sure you're getting the best deal my personal favorite for pretty much everything and i've used these antennas for about 10 years probably my personal favorite antenna is the Comet SBB series of antennas. If we go to Comet's website here, we can see they get a lot of different uh, monoband and dual band antennas right here. But if you start at the SBB1, which is right here, and the basic difference between, there's, there's like five models. There's SBB1, SBB2, SBB5, SBB7, and there used to be an SBB9 and maybe a SBB12 or something, but those aren't listed anymore. So there's four of them on the website today, and the basic difference between all of them is how tall they are. Okay, so you've got NMO mounts. You can get them in uh, what's called UHF or PL259 mounts if you want to. The taller the antenna you get, the more gain you're going to get on an antenna, which means you're going to hear for a farther distance. A lot of people like to have a short stubby antenna, and those work well, especially for the UHF bands, especially for you GMRS guys, those work just fine. But if you incorporate VHF or even six meters into an antenna, the antenna is going to be taller in order to get better performance and better gain out of it. So just keep that in mind. Use the one that's most applicable to you. None of these Comet SBB series antennas are going to do you wrong, but if you get the taller one, it is going to work a little bit better. So the SBB1 is a dual band. A limit of 60 watts length is 16 inches the SBB2 right here is also a dual band length uh, maximum power 60 watts length is 18 inches the SBB5 and this is the current one that I have in fact I have two of these on the truck right now I have one of these connected to my Icom ID 5100 and another one of these connected to my Yaesu FT FTM 500 so those are the two antennas that I have running on my truck right now, plus a few others for, for multiple bands. This one is an SBB5. It's a maximum power of 120 watts. The length is 38 inches, so it's just over three feet tall. So if you don't want a, a really tall antenna, you don't want it sticking off the top of your truck, or you park in the garage or something like that, then the SBB1 or SBB2 might be a better option for you. But the SBB5 is going to give you a little bit better performance than those because it's taller and has more gain. And then the biggest one uh, out of this line right here is the SBB7. And the SBB7 handles 70 watts, so actually less power, but it's 55 inches tall. It's almost uh, it's almost five feet tall, so it's going to be a very tall antenna. The gain on it is going to be a little bit better. It's got a 4.5 dBi gain on 2 meters and a 7.2 dBi gain on 70 centimeters, whereas the SBB5 only has 3 dB on 2 meters and 5.5 on 70 centimeters. So again, the thing that the, the difference that this makes is that these antennas will allow you to hear farther than the shorter uh, squatty antennas will. So you'll be able to carry on conversations farther away from the repeater and you'll be able to carry on simplex com conversations with another station that's a greater distance from you, typically speaking. Most of your dual band uh, UHF, VHF uh, radios from ICOM, Yezu, Waxon, Kenwood, most of these guys have uh, about a 50 watt limit on uh, the radio, so these all of all four of the antennas I just talked about, 65 watt limit, 70 watt limit, 120 watt limit, are going to work fine for most of your dual band radios. Most of the time, you're not going to be running more than 50 watts in the truck. That's true for GMRS radios. Also, your full power GMRS radios are usually about 50 watts. So these would work great for any dual band 
ham radio. If you want something a little bit shorter, a little bit uh, easier, a little bit more concealed, really, and you should always put your antenna on top of your vehicle, on the hood, on the uh, on the cab of your truck, or on the top of your car. But sometimes people don't like to do that, so you might. Uh, Put it on a trunk lip mount or on a hood lip mount or even on a door mount, something like that. Some Jeep guys put it on like a door mount and I've seen that or maybe the tire rack in the back. That's okay. You want to get it up as high as you can for maximum performance and you want as much metal underneath it as you can also for maximum performance. These Austin antennas model 500C are dual band antennas, two meters and 440. I ran one of these on my wife's car for about three years until she until she got a new car. I haven't put a radio in her newest car yet. It's been two years now. I still haven't put a radio in there. So that's 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 on me. I need to do that. <laughs> I need to get around to doing that. But I had one of these Austin 500C antennas on her old uh, Ford Escape, and it worked it worked beautifully. We had it on top of the vehicle, mounted as high. I had it on a mag mount. It was mounted on top of the uh, of the SUV, mounted as high as I could go, and it got excellent performance all around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She could talk on multiple repeaters, two meters and 440. At the time, I had a um, a, 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 a Yezu FTM 8900 in her car, which will also do 10 meters and 6 meters on FM, but I didn't have antennas for that setup, and we don't have that many repeaters around here anyway. So we just made both mostly stuck to the two meters and 440 repeaters and simplex frequencies and this antenna worked very well this antenna costs about 79 dollars and those common antennas can range from like 50 dollars up to like 100 and 110 dollars depending on where you get it and depending on uh which size of antenna you get so this one for 79 dollars is a great performer it is small it is well, it's smaller than, than the ones we talked about previously. 160 watts rated and is approximately 19 inches tall. So it's a little bit less than two feet. It's going to give you some great performance. And it is in this one is also NMO mount. I think you can probably get them in, in uh, PO259 mounts if you want to. But uh, this is from rfwiz.com, which is a website I've purchased from before. Most of these antennas have an NMO mount, which you can use on uh, on drilling into your vehicle. You can use them on mag mounts. You can use them on various types of mounts. And I suggest feeding all of these antennas with Mezzi and Plomi coax. Mezzi and Plomi coax is the sponsor of today's video. You can always save a 10% discount with the coupon code of HR2Cables at the link in the description below. I personally have Mezzi and Plomi Airborne running in my own vehicle right now. It's the Airborne 5, I think it is. So it's very lightweight, very easy to... Uh, to very flexible, very easy to route through areas in your vehicle. Just great high performance coax. And we've been talking about Mezzi employment for a long time. You can always save 10% with the coupon code below. So go check that out. And thank you, Mezzi employment for supporting this channel. Also from Austin Antenna. Now this one I have not tried, but I was really happy with the 500C. So I found this one today by browsing around for information for this video that I'm making. This one's a tri-band called an Austin Metropolitan uh, 201 Zero 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 model 144, 220, and 440 tri-band antenna with an NMO mount. So this one will incorporate your tri-band antenna, uh, your, your, your third band of the 220 megahertz or 1.25 meter band. I still got a lot of comments on that video I made about the best tri-band mobile radio, which is the Anytone AT5888 UV3+. The only place I know of that actually still sells that radio is RNL Electronics. He gets a batch in. They sell out, and then he has to wait for the next batch to be uh, to be produced by any tone. And uh, last I checked, he was the only person selling that in that that radio. But that's one of my favorite tri-band radios because it does a full 25 to 30 watts on the 220 band, unlike the digital version, which only does five watts on the 20, on the 220 band. So this Austin Metropolitan would be a fantastic antenna if you want to if you have one of these 5888 UV three plus radios and you want to mount it in the car and get full performance on all three bands. This would be a fa fantastic antenna for that. Again, it's still about the same height; it's about 19 uh, inches in height 160 watts so it handles everything that you need for that specific radio if you have other tri-band radios that are older and maybe not in production anymore this would work well for that too another brand i will mention is diamond antennas now admittedly i do not have a lot of experience with diamond antennas but diamond has been around for a long long time most of the time when you go into ham radio stores you're going to see common antennas and you're going to see diamond antennas and there might be a few other brands kind of here and there larson is a brand i'm going to talk about here in a minute uh, Comtelco is a commercial brand. Larson makes commercial. Austin makes commercial stuff too. Diamond and Comet are two of your biggest names in mobile dual band antennas for the amateur radio band. So these antennas right here, you can kind of go through this chart and I'll, I'll share a link to this in the description below. You can go through the chart and pick which one you want as far as the 
height of the antenna is this column on the far right, length in inches. So you've got a 13.8 inch one right there, 33, 40, 38, 57. There's the NR7900A, it's a 57 inch U uh, antenna with a UHF connector on the bottom of it. You can see how tall it is right here on this image on the left. It's got two coils in it, not just one. And it's got a fold-over mask, so you can fold it over. If you want a really tall, great performing antenna, but you want to fold it over to park in the garage or underneath the uh, the parking structure, you can do that with this antenna. But this, this is a full line of dual band antennas from diamond antennas right here. You can get diamond antennas at HRO. You can get them at Gigaparts. I think RNL sells them as well. This is from Diamond's website where they don't sell their products. They let their vendors sell their products, but you can read up on which ones might work for your specific application from this list right here. So I'm just going to leave a link to this PDF or to this web page right here. You can go through and check out which ones you want. Another good antenna and one that does a lot of commercial stuff is Larson. This is on the Gigaparts website that we're looking at right now. This is a Larson 144 to 512 megahertz quarter wave mobile chrome antenna this is just a straight stick antenna there's nothing uh that's a very small resolution image there that's okay so this is just a straight wi steel whip antenna there's nothing special about it the reason it's listed for 144 to 512 is because you cut the antenna to the length you want for the band you want. So this is basically a mono band antenna. You can cut it for 220. If you have a 220 mono band radio, you can cut it for 220 only. If you have a UHF only or a GMRS only radio, you can cut that for the 440 for ham radio or 462 megahertz band for GMRS, and you can use that 2495 for that antenna for a mono band antenna. Depending on what application you have in your vehicle, this might work out well for you as well. I talked about Comet antennas a minute ago, and I waited to talk about this specific model. This is is the CA 2x4 SR NMO. This is a wide banded antenna. So what that means is it's a dual band. It'll do uh, two meters and 440. It says right down here, it says it will do a 1.5 to 1 SWR less on the actual amateur radio bands, 144 to 148 and 440 to 450. But it does a 2.1 or less from 140 to 160 and from 435 to 465. So basically what this means, and I have used this antenna. I've, I don't currently have it on my pickup truck, but I have used it before. This antenna will allow you to work both the GMRS band, the 440 megahertz band, and the two meter amateur radio band. And if you have like merge channels in your two meter uh, radio, in your, in your ham radio, then it'll work that as well. So if you have an opened up radio, and I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't do this, but if you have one, if you have a part 90 radio, that's full open transmit from 136 to 174 and from like 400 to 480. If you have a part 90 radio where it'll work on the amateur radio bands and it'll work on the GMRS bands, this antenna will cover everything that you want to use. It won't cover down to 136, but there's nothing really down there that you want to use anyway. So it'll cover the amateur radio band. It'll cover the, the MERS uh, frequencies, which is around the 155 megahertz. It'll cover 70 centimeter UHF ham radio around the 4. 40 to 450 and it'll cover the GMRS frequencies around the 462 to 465 range. It'll handle 150 watts and the length is about 40 inches so it's just under four feet tall so it is a tall antenna but it were and it does have this fold down mast in it also it has a fold down section on it so if you want to park in the garage or under a carport you'll be able to fold the get out and fold the antenna down and do that kind of thing with it but this is a comment again I said at the beginning one of my favorite antennas and the antenna brand that I have used the most on my own vehicle is a Comet antenna. This is a Comet CA 2x4 NMO mount, SR NMO mount, and it works great for those of you who run one radio for all of the bands and all of the things. The last one I'll talk about today is a Comtelco. Now, Comtelco primarily focuses on the commercial market, but they make some they make some antennas that cover amateur radio bands as well. In fact, you can see this one right here. This is the model A11331BX, and I have like three of these things. I don't have I don't currently have any on the truck right now, but I have run these on my truck multiple times in the past. This is probably the antenna I will put on my APRS station. Once I get the APRS station running in uh, the truck, the full-time APRS station, this might be the antenna that I put up if I get like a, uh, a DMR-only radio, like my Anytone D578. 
this would be most of your DMR stuff is on 440. So if the performance on two meters is somewhat lacking, it's not a big deal. Although I never, I've never noticed it lacking specifically on this model of antenna. But this antenna covers the 900 megahertz band on amateur radio as well. It covers 885 to 970 megahertz. Uh, the 900 megahertz band on ham radio is 902 to 927, I think is what it is. So if you have any 900 megahertz repeaters in your area and you're able to pick up a 900 megahertz radio for not very much money on eBay, this has excellent performance for 900 megahertz. And then if you've got uh, multiple bands, you can switch it back and forth if you want to do that. 19 inches tall, it'll handle about 200 watts is the maximum uh, power capability, and it is an NMO mount for uh, for just the regular mount that, you, that most people use on their vehicle. They are made in the USA also. It has a little blurb right there about that. So Comtelco tri-band, 2 meters, uh, up to 160 megahertz, so it'll cover the MERS band. 440 up to 460 megahertz, which doesn't really cover the GMRS band, but you might be able to adjust it a little bit and get in there. I don't know. I've never tried it for GMRS. So I'm not 100% sure if that would work, but it will cover the 900 megahertz band for amateur radio. And if you have like a 900 megahertz scanner in your vehicle that you want to receive police and fire and you're at from the 800 to 900 megahertz, depending on what frequencies your city or county are on, it might be good for a scanner receive only uh, antenna as well. But I've used that antenna myself. Like I said i've got about three of them right now they're sitting in the garage and i'm gonna put them back on the truck for something soon i just don't know what yet but what antenna do you currently use on your vehicle that covers two meters and 440 do you have anything that covers two meters do you have anything that covers 50 megahertz six meters comet and diamond both make some some uh, six meter antennas they're going to be taller the lower in frequency your in your radio goes the taller the antenna needs to be that's why hf antennas are much much taller and more robust than vhf and uhf antennas what antenna do you use on your vehicle? Put a comment below. I'd love to know. 73.